Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Welcome for the first time. I'm making some tutorial videos around Luminar Neo. You can find my entire playlist for Luminar Neo down there as well as up there. And this video is about enhancing mood and taking mood that exists in a photo and really kind of amping that up. I like moody kind of atmospheric photos and there's a lot of great creative tools in Luminar that allow you to do that. I'm going to walk through how I would handle that on this particular photo, which is right here. Now, I will admit I have an unfair advantage in this photo, which is it's already quite moody. This was the Blue Lagoon at sunrise in uh, outside of Reykjavik, Iceland. Um, so I've already got some kind of mist coming off this hot geothermal uh, pool. I've got a nice sunrise, that sort of thing. But I shot this just on the go as we were headed in at like F1.4. So the sun's kind of blown out, but even so, I don't really even mind. I just like it so much. Um, but there's certain things that I want to do to amp up and enhance the mood. And there's really three things that I think about. And actually, these are the same three things I think about every time I edit a photo, which is light, color, and detail. For making a moody photo, there's specific things I want to do to enhance uh, or adjust each of those. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, is start the way I always start, which is just kind of playing with the highlights and the contrast and the shadows. So the highlights are coming down quite a bit. Negative 70. That looks good. And shadows are going up a bit as well. They're going up about 33. So, you know, I've got a... Uh, I've got a nice little start here. There it is before, and there it is now. So the light's a little bit more balanced out, mostly because I lifted the shadows so much. Um, and the first thing I think about is like temperature and color. Now, this has some warm tones in the sun, and of course, some blue tones in the water and in the sky. And you may know that the yellow in the warm tones and the blue in the cool tones are complementary colors. So I kind of want to play them off of each other. So while I could do something like that to increase the warmth, I don't like that look. I think I lose too much of the blue. And so in this case, I'm gonna to go to about 43 something. I think about like that looks good. And I am gonna bump up the tint just a little bit, just a hair over 20, like maybe a 22. And I know you're thinking, hey Jim, all the warmth is gone, but you know we've, uh, we've got a way to bring that back here in a second. I'm also gonna give it a little bit of vibrance. I don't wanna overdo it. There's a lot of blue, so I, I don't wanna lift anything uh, like vibrance or saturation too high to really make the blue over the top. To me, that's not over the top. It really looked like that. I mean, beautiful blue sky, sunrise, and that water is crazy blue um, in that pool. So well, it is called Blue Lagoon, I guess. Um, so that's it really for develop. So now if you look at the before and after, I started like that. You can see it's kind of a faded out, kind of warm, but kind of, a, I don't know, murky looking. I think it looks clearer now, even though I haven't really done anything in terms of um, adjusting uh, the haze and things like that are that are in the photo. And in fact, I want to kind of play that up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, accept that. And then I'm going to go into Accent AI. And I'm going to give that a little boost as well. I'm going to go to low 40s here. And if you look at the before and after, there it is now. That's before this tool and that's with this tool. So that it that's a super, super tool, by the way, Accent AI. It's just a great slider that helps you do stuff. I recommend not necessarily using it just by itself, and I don't recommend going all the way, but like, you know, 40, I'll often get into that kind of area with uh, with the tool. But I'd say so far, I think my photo's looking pretty good. I started like that, and I'm now like that. So feeling pretty good about it. Now, I did mention one thing that I want to play up is detail. And in this case, I've got a moody photo. I mean, there's steam coming off of it that's kind of like fog, and we're going to get to that in a minute too. But for me, there's not really any need to enhance detail here. And in fact, I'm going to go the other way. So I'm going to go a negative 40 on uh, Structure AI, and that's going across the entire photo. So that's basically just softening things up, makes them a little smoother, makes it to me a little bit more moody. So again, I'm playing up the mood. If you look at the before and the current state, things are a little bit softer. I like that. So I'm going to go with that. And then I'm going to go into landscape and I'm going to get golden hour and I'm going to go to about 45. And so this is bringing back some of those warmer tones and golden hour is great at that. If the warm tones already exist, it's really great at accentuating them. So let me show you before and after. There it is before. And remember, I cooled it off with a temperature in develop. So it got 
really far away, for lack of a better word, from the warmth that was in the scene itself, although that raw file didn't really show it very well. But um, even though I cooled that off using Golden Hour to bring back the warmth that's there, it really did that for the photo, which now I think, I just think that looks a whole lot better. So there it is before and after. And let me show you the entire before and after. There it is. You can see a bit warmer overall than um, it was with um, just the moves in develop, but hitting it with golden hour like that really brings that back and I think allows me to play those warm and cool tones off of each other. I also like that the warm tones um, really um, kind of coming through really strongly in that center section and kind of showing up here in this um, mist that's coming off the water. So that's enhancing the mood. Like I said, I kind of have an unfair advantage because it's a bit of a moody photo to start with, but so far I'm feeling pretty good. Now I did say one of the things I like to adjust is light. So Accent AI helped with that. Some of my moves like with contrast and the highlights and shadows helped with that, but also Relight can help with that. So what I want to do here is Relight the foreground a little bit. So I'm going to go to about a 45 here on the um, brightness near and then depth, I'm gonna go ahead and take that all the way. And so what I'm doing is basically lifting that foreground a little bit. So if you look at the before, there it is. And the after, now it's a little bit brighter in the foreground. Again, light, color, and detail. These are the things that I'm typically enhancing in a photo and the things that I think about. Relight's a great way to help have an impact on the photo. So one more time, there it was before and there it is now. Now we're talking about mood, which for me, again, moody photo to start with, but Atmosphere AI is a great tool to come in and use in order to accentuate the mood because it's got these great uh, drop down options, fog, layered fog, mist, and haze. In this case, I'm gonna go with layered fog because honestly, that steam coming off the water is basically a layered fog already. So in some regard, I'm just coming in here and I'm gonna bump that up. So I go to like high 40s, like 48 or 49, and the depth, I'm gonna lift that a little bit as well. So maybe something like that. You see, if I bring it all the way forward, it kind of brings it into the, uh, the foreground really far. Whereas if I don't, it's just gonna stay over there kind of in the middle. So I wanna pull it forward a little bit, but I don't wanna go all the way. I feel like when you're standing like that with mist and fog, you don't really see it when it's right in front of you. Even if you're in the middle of it, you only see it kind of at a distance. So I'm gonna go, again, at zero, it's like that. I'm gonna pull it to like maybe 35 or something, just so it's kind of uh, into the photo, maybe a little bit higher, yeah, maybe, maybe 34. Um, so it's pulling into the photo, but not all the way forward to me as the photographer and from where I'm standing. So if I show you the before and after, there it is before that tool, and there it is after. I've kind of amped up that, brought it forward a little bit, and in fact, I might actually bring it forward just a little bit more. Again, a little bit of an unfair advantage because some of that already existed, and this layered fog is basically helping that mist that's uh, or steam, really, that's rising from the warm water into the cool air. It's just laying on top of that, giving it an additional uh, layer, if you will, of that. And so, um, again, unfair advantage, but it's a great way to adjust things and I like layered fog. It's probably my favorite out of the four options here in the dropdown in Atmosphere AI. And if you haven't played with that tool, I highly recommend it, but it's great for, especially if you've already got some fog or mist and things like that in your photo, it's a great way to enhance that. So again, before and current state, I like where I am with that. Now, another tool that I absolutely love for adding this kind of um, moody overall kind of atmospheric feeling is, of course, Mystical. I use it all the time. It's just a fantastic tool. And I'm going to go ahead and go to about mid-40s here, so 43, 44, 45, something like that. Again, every photo is different, so just a little experimentation is all it takes. But what this does, as you can see, there it is before and there it is now. It's creating a, almost a little bit more of that look of that mist or fog, whatever you want to call it, that's on the water. It's creating a little bit more of that because what Mystical does is you can see there it is before and there it is now. It's taken the brighter parts of the photo, which, hey, the mist is kind of white. It's a brighter part of the photo. It's being hit and lit up by the sun. Um, it basically uh, gives that uh, section of the photo a little bit of a glow, for lack of a better word, um, and it creates a little bit of contrast. And so if you go and look at the before, there it is, and the after, again, a little bit more mood, a little bit overall kind of 
feeling to the photo. I like how that looks. Now, I mentioned how that gives a little bit of a glow to the photo. There is a glow tool, and there are some great options here. I didn't really particularly like them on this photo, but I would recommend experimenting with things like glow and Orton effect on your own photos when you're trying to enhance or create some mood because they do have a nice impact. Again, didn't use it on this one, but it is something to think about and possibly use on your own shots. Now I'm gonna pop down to Super Contrast. I absolutely love this tool. I talked about it in that video. And I, uh, I went through and I looked at Highlights Contrast and Midtones Contrast, and honestly, I just decided I didn't wanna use either of those, but Shadows Contrast, I did want to use. So I went pretty high here, like a 67, 68. And for the balance, I went slightly negative, like a negative three or negative four. And as you can see in the before and after, there it is before, and there it is after. It actually, because I'm uh, adjusting the balance and changing the shadows contrast, it's actually slightly removing the kind of vignette kind of look that I have on that photo. So there it is before and there it is after. Uh, basically what I'm doing is reducing the contrast in the shadows. And so those areas that are a little bit darker are getting a little bit lighter, which also is accentuating kind of what I did with Mystical and what I did with the Atmosphere tool where I'm creating, kind of enhancing that overall look of the fog on the photo. So that's something that um, works pretty well, adjusting the contrast after you've done these other tools that are adding the mood. So again, atmosphere, could be glow, could be mystical, or some combination. Coming in with super contrast gives you some control over that light because those other tools do impact contrast. And so super contrast might allow you to come back in and you know, basically reverse some of the contrast impact of those kind of moody tools, if you will. So something that worked for me here, that's really the edit. The only other thing I thought about, uh, and this would, again, vary on the photo, is using vignette. In this case, I might go very light. Um, I don't want a heavy vignette. I basically, on super contrast, just kind of remove the vignette, but I do like inner light a lot. So again, if you look at that center of the photo, uh, basically look at the sun, and if I drag the inner light as I do that, I'm getting a brighter section, of course, because it's inner light, so it, de it defaults to the center of the photo. But you could relocate that uh, with Choose Subject. You could just drop that right on top of the sun. And then this inner light is going to create even more of that haze. Now, again, be careful because you don't want to go too high and just make a big blown out mess. But adding a tiny bit of that might further enhance your overall mood in the photo. So if I look at the before and after, it's very slight here. This photo doesn't really need it but it is a tool to think about because that inner light is so powerful. I'm not gonna use it here, but think about it possibly in your photos because that inner light can add a little bit more brightness, which complements the glow and the things that happen with Mystical, you know, if you use those tools as well. And that's my overall edit, my friends. Let me show you the before and after. That's what it started like, you know, a little bit flat. It is a raw file, so they're always kind of flat, but um, you can see that there's color. You can see the blues, you can see some of the warm tones, but a lot of it's kind of lost. And now I've got a lot moodier photo of enhance the haze, whatever you want to call it. I basically added haze instead of dehazing it. And I've added and enhanced some of that layered fog, that steam that's coming off of it and just created kind of a softer. Um, I didn't really lose all the contrast, but I lost enough to make it look like it's kind of faded. And the fade, for lack of a better word, is there partly because I've got so much kind of mist and steam and reduced contrast. So it kind of softens the overall contrast of the photo, which makes in me, you know, in my opinion, in this particular photo, it looks a bit more moody. So one more time, there it is before the edits and there it is now. That's kind of how I approach this one. I hope it gives you some ideas for your own photos. And, um, you know, there's so many creative and fun tools here in Illuminar, and I went through quite a few of them here in the creative section in this video. But as you can see, they can really help you impact the overall look and mood of your photos. Hope this gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon. If you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. That helps me quite a bit, and it tells YouTube that, hey, this video is pretty cool. So thanks for doing that. I'll see you guys really soon. You guys take care of yourselves, and until next time, adios.